Curbing California's socialist assault on restaurants is crucial for our country's future. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. A battle is brewing in our largest state that has national consequences. Last year, California enacted a law that would bring on a virtual takeover of most of the state's fast food industry. It sets up a council that would have the power to dictate working conditions to non-union restaurants, including setting wages, a minimum of $22 an hour in the offing, working conditions, benefits that must be offered, maximum hours that can be worked, and much more. The law was engineered by the politically powerful Service Employees International Union, the SEIU, to force restaurants to unionize. The dues from upwards of 500,000 new members would give the SEIU multiple millions more dollars for political agitation. Think about this law for a moment. What California is doing here is a prime example of modern socialism. Today's extreme leftists realize that government doesn't need to nationalize business as was advocated in traditional Marxist doctrine. Government can effectively control private enterprises through regulation. If California can engineer such a de facto takeover of the fast food industry, why can't the Golden State or any other government entity, including Washington, do the same with other businesses? In fact, socialism by regulation was tried by the federal government in the early 1930s. When Franklin Roosevelt became president, Congress passed the National Industrial Recovery Act, one of the most sweeping and invasive pieces of legislation in American history. It had industries set up codes dictating what companies could charge for their products and services, what wages had to be paid, and sweeping regulations concerning how businesses were to be run. People were jailed for not obeying the codes, such as charging less for a service than what was permitted. In fact, it was the arrest of a kosher chicken seller that led to the case where the Supreme Court unanimously decided the act was unconstitutional. A California group called Save Local Restaurants has collected more than enough signatures for a referendum on this issue. Under the state's constitution, such a petition would put the law on hold the law was supposed to go in effect on January 1st, until the voters decide the matter. But typical of the lawlessness of these times, California declared the law would go into effect until all the signatures were verified, which in this case would take months. Recognizing this brazen flouting of the California Constitution, a state court issued a restraining order, but the order is only temporary. There will be plenty of other California-like efforts to affect de facto takeover of industries via regulation. That's why the Golden State's fast fooderies must prevail. Ultimately reflecting the spirit of what it did in the mid-1930s, the Supreme Court should weigh in and forcibly kibosh such unconstitutional de facto seizures of businesses. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.